A lot of people think that Tesla's fast chargers and their fast charging network is not really that great. Why is it that Ford, General Motors, even Volkswagen are talking about joining the group now? Volvo, Polestar. Why is it that these guys are joining up with Tesla, adopting NAX chargers? Well, this is the reason. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans and I'm the Electric Viking. A recent study explains why everyone is adopting Tesla's supercharging network. It explains why Jim Farley said it took him about 30 seconds to make a decision. Putting 12,000 fast chargers on the network on your Ford Pass app with your Lightning is going to be even better for customers. So I didn't really, our team didn't really hesitate because it's, it's good for customers. To join Tesla? to join the dark side, or whatever you want to call it, to become part of the Death Star, as some people are calling Tesla. Bit strange, but I've heard that comment before. A new customer satisfaction study shows exactly why this is happening. Over the last few weeks, a number of big automakers announced they're gonna make the change to adopt Tesla's NAX charging plug in North America. It means they basically have to install the connection the software to make Tesla's charging basically be the primary charging standard in their EVs. It's, it's not a small thing. This is a fairly significant thing to do. You've got to be committed to make this decision. JD Power has explained why. Its survey shows that customers are very unsatisfied using charging networks such as Volkswagen's Electrify America or other networks and they're actually very satisfied using Tesla's superchargers. The organization found that on a 1,000 point scale, Tesla's supercharger network scored highest of all charging providers. It received a score of 734. That's the average for all other providers, actually with only 558. 734 versus 558 doesn't sound like much, but actually it's a huge difference. Reliability is the biggest reason for the major difference in these numbers. Only 3.9% of Tesla supercharger users were not able to charge when they reached a station. That was from Automotive News. In comparison, the users of other charging networks were unable to get a charge around 22% of the time. That's it. That's actually astronomical. 3.9% versus 22%. But the thing is, Tesla superchargers are on average much faster than the competition. So you spend less time and you're far more likely to be able to actually charge. You don't have to drive away and try and find somewhere else. Now, interestingly, the survey participants also said that there are more Tesla than non-Tesla charging stations in America. So it's I think it's just easier to find the Tesla ones versus finding the other branded ones. Customer satisfaction is becoming a big concern. And a lot of brands are thinking to themselves, why is Tesla's customer satisfaction so high? Why is their brand loyalty so high? Their cars are not all that reliable. Well, they have a point. This is one of the reasons. It's becoming a big concern for them. Toyota, a recent report came out. Let's have a look at that. Toyota slips in brand loyalty. It's partly due to Tesla based on new surveys. See, apparently Toyota is normally neck and neck with General Motors and Ford on customer brand loyalty in the US, but that is changing. They've lost significant share when it comes to customer loyalty in the United States. This is just one of the reasons. Now, of course, the other reason is the fact that they don't sell any compelling electric cars or any significant number of them either. That's probably part of the problems too, but let's get back to the charges. It doesn't matter how good your vehicle is, if drivers can't get reliable public charging one more, more than one fifth, nearly a quarter of the time. That's pretty horrendous as an experience. That helps to explain why automakers like Ford, General Motors, Rivian, Volvo, Polestar, and most likely soon other companies such as Volkswagen, Mercedes, and BMW, it's really only a matter of time before they come across two, are adopting the NAX charging standard over the coming years. In addition, Hyundai, Stellantis, and Volkswagen have all hinted that they're likely to do so within the next few years as well. However, as more automakers start 
using the network, it may become harder for Tesla to maintain its sterling reputation for charging reliability, or maybe not just reliability, but just accessibility. JD Power reports that the company benefits from controlling both the charging stations and controlling the vehicles that use them. This enables Tesla to control and test the compatibility between the vehicle hardware and software and the supercharger hardware and software, said Elizabeth Creer, Vice President for EV Practice for JD Power. In other words, this reliability score may decrease as different non-Tesla vehicles start using Tesla's supercharger network. That there's clearly a possibility. Meanwhile, other EV charging providers have to deal with a variety of vehicles, all on different software that is constantly changing. With a lack of public charging stations being one of the biggest challenges facing US EV adoption, the move to put more vehicles on the largest network currently in operation is mainly being viewed as a positive one. It's also meaning Tesla is going, you know what, we're going to build more charging stations. We're going to build as many as we can because we have a captive audience and we have access to cheaper electricity than most of our competition, which is true. And I talked about that in other videos and why that is. If the Tesla user experience can be replicated for the non-Tesla EV users, then adoption of NACs by non-Tesla manufacturers could improve the overall charging experience and reliability for customers of those brands. In the short term, opening the nation's fast charging network, best fast charging network and largest fast charging network to non-Tesla owners helps address one of the industry's biggest challenges, which is making more public fast chargers available. Not having people buy an EV and going, uh, this experience wasn't as good as I thought it would be, which is what happens to a lot of people who buy an EV and they don't realize that the charging scenario is not always the best if you're outside the Tesla supercharged network. You don't have to be a Tesla fan to believe me. Just ask Ford, Jim Farley, ask Mary Barrow. They know and they very quickly, very publicly said Tesla's supercharging network is the best. I think it's a good thing. I think it's good for the industry. I think it's good for general EV owners. And I think it means Tesla's going to invest a lot more money into building out superchargers as quickly in as many locations as they possibly can. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.